Hi, I'm Isabel Wong with Yahoo Finance and welcome to this edition of Yahoo Finance All Markets Summit Asia. This year, our theme is New Challenges, New Opportunities. So we are bringing in business leaders from around the Asia Pacific region to talk about their views on investing technology and business strategies for the way forward. And here with us is Austin Bryan, Chief Digital Officer of CLP Holdings Limited. With over 120 years of history in Hong Kong, CLP provides electricity to more than 80% of the Hong Kong population. To help Hong Kong meet its goal of carbon neutrality by 2050, CLP has put together a holistic decarbonisation strategy to work towards bluer skies for the city. And in this conversation, we are going to talk to Austin about the digital transformation efforts that he's been leading for CLP in bringing the vision of becoming a digital utility of the future to life. Austin, thank you so much for joining us for this summit. Thank you. It's really a, a pleasure to be here. Yeah. In order to set the scene for the conversation, I would like um, to I would like you to help us understand what is the concept of a digital utility in CLP's point of view. Well, it's, it's a pretty exciting time for energy in general. Uh, there, there are three key things that you will see energy companies coming to grips with. So decarbonization, digitalization, and electrification. So w what, what I think is really a, a critical opportunity for uh, all of us today is the connection between those three. So decarbonization, uh, climate change, uh, you know, uh, net zero, all of these things are now really being effectively connected to how we think about digitizing daily activity uh, across the spectrum of smart, sustainable, connected, low carbon or zero carbon intensity cities. So all of the things that we've experienced in our lives uh, with anytime, anywhere uh, services that are available uh, at our fingertips on a tablet or a mobile or a laptop through Wi-Fi, through, uh, through 3G, 4G, 5G today are now uh, coming to the energy sector. And the, f the final aspect of that is the things that are not electrified today that can be electrified, which will then decarbonize society. So those three themes uh, make what I get to do probably the best job uh, in, in the city. Mm -hmm. And those three aspects are going to anchor our conversation today. And I know that with um, over 120 years of presence in Hong Kong, CLP also has investments across the region in mainland China, India, Southeast Asia and Taiwan. But how has CLP's efforts of digital transformation impacted the overall business so far and, and also the energy services that you guys have been providing for your customers in this part of the world? Well, well, first and foremost, none of those uh, countries and their, their markets or their consumers or their businesses are all changing at the same rate. So what you see happening in China or India uh, is quite different than what you see happening uh, in Australia or even in Hong Kong. So for us, that gives us a unique opportunity to look at the changing energy landscape uh, across the spectrum of the energy value chain, which is traditionally generation, transmission, distribution, and retail. And then looking at what's happening in India, where you're shifting to a much more uh, heavily focused uh, renewables environment, or if you, or if you think about uh, China or, or Hong Kong specifically, parts of this city can be fundamentally decarbonized and digitized at the same time. So roughly 90% uh, of the energy consumption for a city like Hong Kong is in buildings. As we, uh, those of us who live here know very well, it's almost 60% uh, of the CO2 emissions as well. So if you can tackle connecting digital information with decarbonization, both for consumers and businesses, you can have a very powerful impact on decarbonizing. So that, again, is different than what we see where flexible energy and energy available uh, where the grid requires it in Australia is, is a fundamentally different problem. So we, we look at each of our markets and we think, about how they're tackling that problem and we try to deploy our investment strategies and our market view on the opportunities for growth uh, according to their opportunities. Right, and obviously with the rapid global climate change, um, decarbonization has obviously become um, a key focus for a lot of countries and companies worldwide. And as you just mentioned, for, for different markets, there are different approaches and pace that they would be um, implementing in the sense of decarbonization. So for Hong Kong, what is CLP's vision for a net zero future? 
Well, as you know, uh, we've been committed uh, to this question uh, since 2007, one of the first, in fact, the first Asian uh, energy uh, company to commit uh, in the way that was required across the globe. Uh, and so we continue to lead that discussion and make those commitments ahead of the market. Uh, our, our uh, you know, uh, net neutral strategies for 2050 are well exposed and, and well understood. Our goal is to work with the market, with the government, uh, in each environment that we operate in, and specifically for Hong Kong, to try to help systematically decarbonize, digitize, and electrify uh, the economy in a way that is going to be uh, better for Hong Kong citizens. We, we power every aspect of the economy today for 80% of the citizens in Hong Kong. So it's vitally important that we work very closely with the government and with the private sector uh, in a systematized approach to make that happen. And uh, again, you've said 120 year old uh, utility. I would say we're 120 years young. Our challenge is to constantly connect ourselves to uh, a, a way to be vibrant and dynamic in uh, solving problems for the city. Yeah, and I would like to follow up on your um, different approaches across different markets in the Asia Pacific region, right? Because as you previously mentioned, you know, approaches is different um, across markets and also in the sense of like uh, infrastructure, different cities and different markets have, you know, different standards as well as um, current state of play. So how um, does CLP navigate through, you know, different markets and landscapes um, for decarbonization in the Asia Pacific region? Well, there can be no surprise that uh, for those of us who, who look at Hong Kong, think about the Greater Bay and the opportunity. It's, it's 60 to 80 million people. Um, uh, it, it's uh, an economy that would be the 12th largest uh, from a GDP perspective if, if it were a standalone environment. Uh, so for us, connecting Hong Kong and all of our assets and our capability and our businesses to the opportunities for growth, both uh, outside of China into Hong Kong and the Greater Bay or from China and the Greater Bay out to the rest of the world is critical. So we think about energy infrastructure. Uh, an example of that would be, uh, again, a shopping center that might have a, a, a cooling system that needs to be changed. Today, you can connect artificial intelligence, predictive uh, uh, machine learning, deep learning capabilities to help change the way that they operate those environments and in fact give uh, uh, individual businesses choice and control over whether they wish to make their energy available or not or which they wish to share collectively. All of those things uh, we're connecting systematically. W w one example, uh, a shopping center in Po Park in, in Guangzhou uh, earlier this year, uh, we um, uh, shipped uh, technology uh, and uh, did an OTA over the air uh, upgrade uh, on WeChat uh, for that shopping center to be able to then put that uh, energy management uh, solution to work in all of their assets to drive down their energy consumption and also to reduce their CO2 emissions and to make that reportable in a way that was uh, allowing them to show what they're doing on sustainability. Right, and um, you mentioned a little bit about technologies. I'm just wondering what are some of the key technologies that could help your customers decarbonize and become more sustainable? Well, I think there's two parts to that. One is uh, the, the longer journey for those of us who are consumers and then the, the, the shorter journey for, for businesses. Uh, the, the practicality for business is what can the technology do to help me reduce my expenditure, connect it to lower energy consumption, uh, to connect it to transparency around actionable leadership on sustainability. Uh, because that's increasingly how businesses are going to survive today. If they can't show actionable leadership around sustainability, they will not be investment grade, as you well understand. They, they will also not be palatable uh, to their consumers uh, where they're attempting to make themselves attractive. So uh, that is software that solves uh, fundamental problems today, like building energy management or electrification of things like the transportation assets that they operate. If you're a large uh, goods manufacturer or a distributor, you might have a large fleet that needs to move from internal combustion engines to EV. So managing that fleet transition with uh, energy as a service or mobility as a service is a fundamentally ch changed environment from a depot where I had 300 vehicles that I have uh, had as, as diesel vehicles or a construction company that's looking to have uh, storage and energy efficiency on site, that's fundamentally shifting from diesel, which is uh, CO2 emitting, to, to uh, battery storage capabilities, which can be value accretive in the way that they talk about how they build in a zero carbon way. 
or data centers finally. And obviously with technological development, cost will become a factor to consider, right? So sustainability and affordability, can they work hand in hand? How is CLP you know, uh, offering affordable options for their customers while transitioning your business model from more, more of like a fossil fuel to, you know, cleaner energy? Mm. Well, uh, as you know, we're working uh, very systematically to shift and, and exit uh, all of the, the, the coal-related uh, assets that we have today, and we're ahead of our plan, in fact, 10 years ahead of what we committed, uh, and, and we will be out of those. Today, Hong Kong enjoys about 50% of its energy uh, coming from gas and about 23% from nuclear and uh, other residual sources. But, uh, you know, even Hong Kong, a, a city where many people live in high-rise uh, apartments above 15 floors, uh, we've had a massive uptake of renewable energy uh, demand for rooftop solar and the ability uh, for companies to be able to produce their own energy and sell that back to the grid, uh, which uh, is increasingly a phenomena that, that is taking place in, in many markets. Uh, I've, uh, I'm just uh, An example would be Australia, where 50% of the uh, rooftop houses are, are already having rooftop solar and uh, in-home storage which allows them to be a major source of energy contribution uh, f for, for the country as opposed to having to build large scale power plants where you had one way uh, energy uh, production and delivery. Now, obviously, the impact of COVID-19 is quite disruptive for a lot of industries. But what was, you know, some of the uh, key learnings for CLP through COVID-19? And how is it going to inform CLP equipping its own business to become more resilient and sustainable going forward? So uh, I, I guess I have three observations. One is uh, how, how did companies connect to their staff in a human way and to their, to their customers in a human way that was authentic and defensible? Um, th that's one part of it. The other, the other one is, is how did we shift to, to use many of the tools that we've been using, perhaps ad hoc or unsystematically, uh, so that we could work remotely, whether that's in mo many countries across many time zones or in many places in a city uh, a across many locations. And then ultimately uh, for us around uh, the fastidious and important nature of safety in managing energy services and deployment and correction and change of those energy services. So I think you have to work very hard, that was one of our learnings, to make those meetings still have a heart and soul. Uh, and it's not just uh, being silly, uh, it's about being human in, in the way that you do that. And uh, so, so for us, I, I guess those three areas, thinking about how do we manage safety and, and then ultimately uh, how do we connect people if they're not uh, physically uh, connected? And how do we make technology not the objective, but an enabler to a business outcome? And then managing the health and well-being of our workforce and ourselves. And finally, you obviously CLP um, has a strategy in place um, for decarbonization. That's half the battle. So how are you driving the whole cultural change transformation within the CLP workplace and instill that change mindset to truly transform CLP from a traditional power utility company to a digital utility for the future? Well, a couple of things. Most, if not all, of the people that are in energy uh, have a real personal, uh, emotional connection to sustainability and climate change. Uh, if, if you if you get them in an unguarded moment, they will tell you they they're, they're quite proud of the fact that what they do uh, connects to some small uh, contribution to uh, reducing global warming, to to making the planet a better place for all of our our uh, our families uh, to, to live, work, and play. Um, so th that I think is a, is a real passion in, in all of our workforce. The, the other part of that is uh, understanding that we can connect what we do with our, our, our consumers and with our businesses and help them tackle that challenge, whether that's someone who, who deals with an, a network and the performance of, of, of energy across a network or someone who's trying to help businesses change the way that they think. Uh, f for us as a company, w sustainability is at the core of how we think about operating today. It is uh, connected to everything from practical planning to deployment of products and services to investments in technologies uh, or not, uh, whether they are on strategy or off strategy, uh, ultimately gets down to a, a, a question about whether we think we can uh, put our hands on our hearts and, and show that it's connecting to sustainability. Austin, thank you so much for the insightful chat. That was Austin Bryan, Chief Digital Officer of CLP Holdings Limited.
For more content from All Markets Summit Asia, please check out hk.finance.yahoo.com.